I am your father. Um, actually, that's not how the line goes. Huh? Yeah, for real. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Nonsensicality. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, whatever you're doing, I hope it's a great day. Whether you're, you're sitting indoors, whether you've been walking in the park, still under the whole quarantine thing, but a lot of places are starting to get their their freedom, as it were. Yeah. Uh, so people may be out and about. Maybe maybe you're driving around listening to this now. Maybe you're just sitting at home because you know. It's cool. It's cool. Staying at home just is cool. Staying at home is the new cool thing. Uh, no, but anyway, uh, yeah. Did you know you misquoted that movie totally? I'm I'm still like stuck on it. Luke, I am your father. Darth Vader says that. Luke says no. And but why are you and shaking to your that, head? I say no because he doesn't say that. He does not say Luke, I am your father in that. And a lot of people agree with you. They think it's that. That's what it says. Is Luke, I am your father. And they're wrong, or are they? Are you sure you're not wrong? Are they maybe thinking of a different timeline? Dun, dun, dun. This little effect actually has has transcended much of pop culture and history in itself. And it's a little thing that they've they've named it the Mandela effect. Have you heard of the Mandela effect? Well, I've heard of Nelson Mandela. Well, and he's one of the key figures in that. uh, And that's kind of got the ball rolling on that because a lot of people remember that Nelson Mandela, when he was in prison... Remember, he went to prison, right. you know, for fighting the apartheid and all that you yeah. know, in South Africa. He went to prison. Mm-hmm. And many, many people remember that in the 80s, sometime during the 80s, he died while he was in prison. Oh. And, of course, most people now have reconciled that rememory because they're like, no, he ended up becoming... Rememory. Rememory. He became president of South Africa Later he came on. back from the dead to become president <laughs> so, of South uh, Africa. So a lot of people are like, no, he he died in the 80s. They remember thinking there was funerals and there were riots. And they're like, they remember details about how Mandela died in the 80s. And then all of a sudden in the 90s, he's it's the 90s or even 2000s, he's freed and then he becomes president. And so. So why did they think he died? It was just this this shared false memory that so many people have. And, the rumor uh, mill. The well, rumor mill. No, it's not about rumors because they 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 recall experiencing, like so really? they recall the funeral, they recall people rioting, things like that. Huh. So it's not just like a rumor mill. It's not just did you hear that? That that'd be different, and that happens, and that get re- gets rectified. But this is like memories people have. They're like confident in this memory, but they're wrong. Or they've actually started making up reasons why they're not wrong. And one of those is alternate timeline. That at some point in history, uh, you know, it's a whole multiverse theory. I'm not going to get into that because that's like it a bunch soups of... soups nerdy. Yeah, nerdy jargon. I don't believe in any of it. Um, I have my theories on it, which I'll get to in just a moment. But for the most part, it's, uh, you know, they, they think, you know, this happened. Why does... What do so many people believe it? Um, the term Mandela Effect, I'm going to get into a little history lesson, began in 2009 by writer and paranormal researcher Fiona Broom. So, you know, already go, Fiona. into paranormal research. So she believed in like something paranormal was going on. It was named after the phenomenon. Many people say they remember that Nelson Mandela died in prison in the 80s, but he really lived until 2013 and died in his own home. Of course, after becoming the president of South Africa and, and the whole Invictus thing, right? The The, the movie. Was that about like the rugby team or something? No, in- soccer team. I don't. Invictus, know. you remember that though, right? I don't. Yeah, Nelson Mandela. Okay, maybe anyway. I was in a different timeline. <laughs> but over the years, here's the thing: more and more of these phenomena are popping up, and people are convinced that there's something up. Uh, you know, some you know sort of you know some of the theories are, are kind of funny. And some of them are kind of dark and kind of like crazy. One of them says that the world actually ended in 2012. And this is just some uh, like delusion or some, you know, because the whole Mayan calendar thing. Oh, uh, we're, yeah. we're in the Matrix. Yeah. Or that's the other one. We're in the Matrix. And so there's a glitch in the Matrix. It's caused so many people to have that. You know, yeah, they go. I mean, like, it's funny. But, you know, I have this 
feeling in the pit of my tummy right now that we're about to take a quiz and you're going to see what I know and you're don't correct. know. You're correct. You're correct. Just a little bit. And Basically, really what's scared. happening is large groups. So this isn't just a few people. This isn't just a, a, a group of people, that, like a collective of people that know each other that said, hey, let's start this. These are people like they'll they'll someone will post something and the people all over the world are like, I remember that, too. I remember that, too. So it's it's not just like a small group. It's not like these group of people trying to make it happen. It is lots of people. And, and even you remember a little differently. You've just been exposed. And I bet a lot of people that are listening are like, wait a minute. No, it does say, Luke, I am your father in oh, that. Um, yeah. And so they'll even share details. And then we're gonna, the, the, the number one, I'm going to do the top 10. And you're going to try to guess. But the number one is probably one of the most crazy ones. And people are just adamant that something is up. Um, and there's just something not right. So this is the darkest timeline sometimes. No, it's not the darkest timeline. The, those of you who watch Community you know what Kim's <laughs> talking about there. Uh, but it's kind of like that idea is, and the whole idea behind multiverse, a lot of people think that every decision that gets made creates a parallel time. Like, kind of like that movie Sliding Doors, you know how Oh, I had, liked that. Yeah, and some people think that that's what the multiverse is. And I'm just like, there are bajillion, which is a real number, decisions made every day. So that means that every day there are bajillion new universes formed. I don't, I don't buy into any of that. Well, that'd be um, really multi. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be uncountable. Uh, but we're going to look at my favorite 10, my 10 favorite Mandela effects. I have a few others uh, that I like that I'm into, and I might even touch on them a little bit. But we're going to do my favorites in the form of a quiz. Mm. Are you ready? I don't know that I'm ever ready for your quizzes. All right. So I'm going to give you the question, uh, and you're going to try to tell me what you think the answer is. First one is Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. What does Darth Vader say when he reveals to Luke that he's his father? I already got it wrong. Yeah, you said... Luke, I am your father. Yes. And the answer is Darth Vader just says, no, I am your father. Because the line before that, Luke says, no, Ben told me you killed my father. So to say, Luke, I am your father doesn't make sense. It's not contextually accurate. Right. And so he says, no, I am your father. But throughout history, and I remember as a kid, I would talk into the electric fan. You ever do that as a kid? You talk into the fan, like you'd have the like the little box no, fan. No, I think I missed out on so many childhood. That was so great. Like in Tommy Boy, he's doing it too. And what is he saying, Tommy Boy? Luke, Luke I, am I am your, your father. father. And that's what I would say as a kid. Because that adds context. To, to go into a, a, a box fan and say, no, no, I am your father. People are be like, what are you talking about? So you kind of, I get the idea why okay. people think it's Luke. And then in, in pop culture, that like I said, Tommy Boy said that there's an episode of The Simpsons where um, it's almost like Simba in the clouds, you know, and then it, it pans over and Darth Vader's in the cloud. And he says, Luke, I am your father. There's a lot of Simpsons crossover with Mandela Effect, which I is kind of I don't remember fun. The um, Simpsons that well. Yeah, well, anyway, so okay. you, you got one wrong. Okay. You can get this one, I'm sure. Oh. Snow White. And okay. the Seven Dwarves. And the Seven Dwarves. No, there are only four. No, I'm just kidding. No, they were not. That is not it. Okay, so when the evil queen goes and talks to her mirror, what is the thing she enchants or she chants before? Well, it's not mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of it all? That's what people all, but... think. I think it's magic mirror. On it the wall. is magic mirror on the wall. And so, so many people are like, that's a Mandela effect. It used to say mirror, mirror. False. Now, here's the thing. It was magic mirror, like you said. Disney, uh, loving their copyrights, made it a little different than what the Grimm brothers said. The Grimm brothers actually did say mirror, mirror on the wall. Ah. Disney called it magic mirror on the wall. And my guess is to have a better copyright hold on that phrase. Got it. At least that's what I think. You know? Okay. Like the seven dwarves. The seven dwarves, those are Disney names. Like the sleepy, happy, dopey. Those are all Disney names. I think right. we've even talked about that before. Yeah. Whereas historically they had different names. So, all right. Okay. So you're, you're, you're one out of two. Yes. Keep score. I'm, I, I can't keep track. So I got one. one. Okay. So there's a book written by a couple named Stan and Jan about bears. What is the name of that book series? The Berenstain Bears. The what? Berenstain Bears. It is. It's Berenstain Bears. But so many people are confident it's Berenstain Bears. And they're like, no, it's Berenstain Bears. Now, you grew up reading. So you <laughs> you were like, oh, you, know, you read a lot is what I'm saying. I did. So for you being a literary buff, you probably. Now, did you know that because you remember it or did just because we've talked about it before? Because I know some of these we've talked about. No. OK. So, so you're going to get a good, good grade on this quiz. Anytime I read a book, I pay attention yeah. to the author. Because yeah. if someone asks you, what are you reading? Yeah. I want to say I'm reading the yeah. Berenstain Bears by 
you know. Stan and Jan Berenstain. Yeah. And so yeah. you want, I pay attention to the authors and okay. the titles. So it's Stain, S-T-A-I-N. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of people think it's Berenstain and they're like, I'm confident. And someone even posted a picture of a VCR spine that said Berenstain. And, you know, it could have been faked or could have been a misprint, like if they got it from some like third party or something, you know. So anyway, it's one of those that a lot of people say it's Bernstein, uh, which you know, like Bernstein is a real name. So, they're, you know, and just saying things fast over right. and over again, I think probably just caused some confusion. So you're two for three. Come on. All right. I'm doing quite well. I need you to describe for me. Oh, no. The Monopoly Man, Uncle Moneybags. What does he look like? He's got a suit and uh -huh. little gray hair. Yeah. Pow Pat. Yeah. I can't remember if he has a cane or not. I think he carries a cane occasionally. Anything else? Oh, he has a mustache. And he does. Big mustache. What does he wear in the eyewear? Does he wear a monocle? Perhaps. He does not. You're right. He does not. But many people think. Mr. Peanut has a monocle. Mr. Peanut has a monocle. And a lot of people are like, no, the Monopoly man used to have a monocle and now he's not. Alternate timeline. They got rid of the monocle at some point in the timeline. You got it right. Now, the thing again, it's one of those things. It's like a kind of a pop culture thing. You addressed it. Mr. Peanut has the same kind of look. Top hat, cane, yeah. monocle. and But no awesome mustache. No, that's true. And then like there are even, again, pop culture references where they kind of make comparisons to people like that with the Monopoly man. Like in Ace Ventura 2, he meets this man who's bald, who's got a big mustache, and a monocle, and he calls him the Monopoly Man. So, again, ah. I think pop culture played into that. A lot of people are thinking, no, he had a little monocle at one time. But I think it was just, again, one of those where, you know, we're reconciling certain other memories right. and we're, we're piecing things together. And I think pop culture does play a lot of, uh, into that. And we're going to see it. Like, I, again, I said The Simpsons seems to do it a lot. All right. So, and I also think the word Monopoly makes us think monocle. Ooh, just a thought. Just a thought. There it is. There's lots of little circles in the word monopoly. Maybe oh. you just think that one of them should be over his eye. All right. So you, you've got what, three I out of four? Three. Wow. I'm so good. All right. Forrest Gump's favorite or famous box of chocolate quote. What is it? Life is like a box of chocolates. You are incorrect. You never know what you're going to get. You are incorrect. And most people say that's what it says in the movie. Again, they're making it contextually so accurate. What does he say? Or applicable. He says life was like a box of chocolate because he's quoting his mom. And he says, mom always said life was like a box of chocolate. So he's quoting her in retrospect. So it makes sense. But whenever you're quoting him in context, you never say that mom always said. You just say life is like a box of chocolates. Yeah, you, you could say it just like life like box chocolates. I can't do it. Anyway, uh, so Forrest Gump, there you go. Okay, so you got one wrong. Dun, so dun, dun. but again it's one of those that's very small and there's one i didn't put on there so i'm gonna uh and we <laughs> talked we actually talked about it when we were watching the are you my neighbor sorry night. i'm drinking tea yeah let you <laughs> cough it out i'm not sorry. editing that because we're in the middle of a conversation so. i know i'm sorry uh no like the the mr rogers one what is that called what was that new one we watched with tom hanks we talked beautiful about, day in the neighborhood yeah it's beautiful day in our neighborhood. This neighborhood. Oh, a neighborhood. You didn't get it right. I'm not, it's not part of the quiz. It's but a beautiful day. It's a beautiful somewhere. day in this neighborhood. But he says it so fast, most people say, beautiful day in the neighborhood. When Eddie Murphy did it, beautiful day in the neighborhood. Mr. Robinson's neighborhood. Do you remember that one? Vaguely. You didn't like it, probably. Probably not. Uh, so it was, again, a lot of people just like when other people are doing TV shows and all that, they might quote it a little differently or, or you just can't really hear Mr. Rogers saying it very well because he goes, hey, it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. And so it's very quick. Oh. Anyway, that's not part of the quiz, but a lot of people, are, they swear up now. No, it always said the neighborhood. And now he's saying this neighborhood all of a sudden. And all the tapes retroactively reflect that and it's like somebody went back and edited everything or that would be a big job. the alternate timeline yeah alternate timeline okay here's one uh the famous uh, field of dreams quote what is that if if um you're gonna hear a dog we have a dog outside barking okay. too but if you build it we they will come they if, will come if you build it they will come Okay, no, that is incorrect. First of all, it's not if you build it, it's just build it. Build it and he will come. Build it and he will come. That's what it says in the movie. Now, why do you think everybody thinks it says they will come? Because the whole T 
team, like a whole Because a whole team at the end of the movie comes out. So yeah. you're thinking, they came. That's what I think. I think most people so just like. So who's the he that was supposed to come? I, was it his dad? I, I don't remember. It's been years since I've seen it. But wasn't it his dad or something? I that don't he's know, been, but a whole team. Yeah, a whole team comes. But he, one person comes that he's been wanting to see. I don't know if it's his dad or a famous ball player. I've only barely seen it once. But I think that's why people think it says they will come. And then whenever people requoted it, they would always say, build it and they will come. That's what most people say. And then people would like use it for other things to get attract, you know, attract a crowd. Let's we'll build it and they will come, you know, that kind of. Huh. So, yeah. All right. I'm not doing so well. Well, this one comes back to a book. So maybe you'll do so well. Oh, good. And this is one I, I did get confused on. Um, but I did. I, I, I knew I was confused. I'm like, is it this or is it that? It was never I could remember. Um, and it may be like a translation thing. But, but Oscar Wilde's novel about Dorian Gray. What is that novel called? I think it's just a portrait of Dorian Gray. That's what most people do think. But it's a picture of Dorian Gray or the picture of Dorian Gray, maybe. I don't know. It's But most people say portrait, but it's actually a picture of Dorian Gray. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's about a portrait. Yeah, it's about a painting. But most people go to, yeah. So that's one of those. Oh, wow. You've been fooled by the Mandela effect. Apparently. Yeah. There you go. All right. Curious George. Does he have a tail or does he not have a tail? Oh. <laughs> Man. Okay, so the Curious George cartoon on PBS came out after Connor was beyond that age. What does that have to do with anything? Well, because I didn't watch it. Oh. His and books. I, it was yeah, also but a I book. Didn't, he didn't... He wasn't into Curious George books so much, so I'm going to say... Read it no. He did not have a tail, but a lot of people recall him having a tail. And they're like, no, he had a tail. He used to swing on his tail. Yes. So, yeah. Cut four. But he does not have a tail. I'm not doing very well. You got your 50%. That's an F. Oh, good. And we only have two left. So you can, at best, do... <laughs> boy, oh boy. A D. All right. That is awesome. Sorry. Let me ask you this. Have you ever tasted Jiffy peanut butter? No. Because it doesn't exist, and I've just spent two days with a lot of peanut butter. <laughs> you have. You've been you've been sorting some there's some Skippy groceries, and, and there's Jiff. That's true. So why do people constantly think they know that there was Jiffy? And they're like, I know Jiffy existed. I remember Jiffy. Now it doesn't. Exist. Why do you think that is? I I think they are combining Skippy and Jiffy, and Skippy and Jiffy, Skippy and Skippy Jif. and Jiff, and it's kids. It, it just all. Merges. I think it's The Simpsons again. Why is it The Simpsons? <laughs> I think a lot of, uh, with things like that one in particular, I remember seeing it as a kid and thinking, oh, that's funny. They combine, combine Jif and Skippy. It was an episode of The Simpsons. I'm pretty sure it was Simpsons. It was a cartoon. But in order to not have a copyright issue, you know, a trademark they violation, they did something called Jiffy, which looked kind of like Jif, but was, you know, so I was like, oh, it's funny. They combine. So I remember seeing it in spoof, you know, like cartoons and stuff like that. It wasn't a real product, but a lot of people think, no, Jiffy was a real product. But again, Simpsons come into play with this one once again. See, because I always knew that it wasn't because the commercial tagline was choosy mothers choose mm -hmm. Jif. Some and my are, mother yeah. did not buy Jif. And but so I always, I'm enough. like, gosh, mom, you don't care anything about what we <laughs> Choosy moms choose Jif and we're getting this knockoff peanut butter and... <laughs> Guess you don't care about our health and wellness. And Smart always, mamas choose great values. So <laughs> always tease her that funny. she was not a choosy mother choosing no, Jeff. That's funny. No, um, yeah, I, I'm confident that has to do with basically television and they made that brand up. And I think it was The Simpsons first time I saw that. And so it just was. So The Simpsons are responsible yeah. for most things that people yeah. get wrong. But there is an episode of The Simpsons where Homer is, is. is afraid of like bears or something. And he trips over a bunch of books in Maggie's nursery and they're all about bears and the book he found was Baron Stain Bears. Oh there it is. So even Simpsons got that one right. It didn't you know I was like, well maybe they they got it wrong because I looked up the clip. Um and I was like maybe they made it wrong on purpose not to violate a, a trademark or you know copyright. But no they actually said Baron Stain Bears on that one. So okay so people recognize that some brands are just cartoon or TV show brands. Like Homer always drank that Duff, Duff beer. beer. Right. That does not exist. So right. why is it that some products people are like, oh, no, that's obviously. Because I think it's too. close to some things like Jiffy, Jif, Skippy. Okay. And so I think that, that just kind of a little easily bled into 
real memories of real things. Huh. No one thinks Duff beer was so original. It's it, no one's going to think that, you know. And so. Well, I got one more point. Yes. So you're at six. No, you're at five out of nine. No, I'm at six. What? I had four. Then I got one. So that's five. Oh. Are you in a Mandela to, effect? I was trying to do new math. Four plus one equals six. <laughs> what happened to five? In new math, it, it works. <laughs> All right. Last one. And this one, I, I I have issues with. I'm like, ugh. Oh. And, and there's so many people that are Wait. adamant, like angry adamant oh. about this one. Okay. So do you remember in like the 90s, I think it was, Shaquille O'Neal did a movie called Kazam where he was a, a genie. Remember that one? I, remember. I mean, we I never watched it, but I remember that there was because I think we were like in college. A too buzz old, but, yeah. that he was in a movie, but I don't know what yeah. it was called. Yeah. So he played a genie named Kazam. Right. Okay. Do you remember about the same time, a little bit after that, that Sinbad did one and it was called Kazam and he was a genie or Shazam and he was a genie? No. Remember that? So you don't remember that at all. You don't remember no. two at the same time. No. Okay. That's that's one of the big ones. And a lot of people are like, I totally remember. He did a movie, Sinbad did a movie called Shazam, and it came out about the same time. And I remember thinking, they just did a genie movie. And I remember thinking that too. That's the thing that no bothers way. me is I, this is the one that baffles me. And so you got a point for that. You got 60%. Good job. Yes. Uh, that's the one that baffles me. And I'm just like, I think I remember that thinking in the video. So I'm like, why would they, why would they do that? That's just such a cheesy knockoff. And maybe because they did that a lot. So, but so Sinbad was never, Sinbad was never in one. Like they've interviewed him. He's like, stop it. He's He's been getting bothered by it. Then he turns around later on and he does a spoof where he does do the movie Shazam and in the movie Shazam, like a, like a trailer for it or like a clip of it. And in that movie, it has the Monopoly man with a monocle. It has all these different oh, Mandela funny. effects where they like, they just spoof the whole thing. So if you look it up on YouTube, you can actually find now a Sinbad in Shazam, but you can tell he's clearly a lot older than he was in the nineties, but nope, never did it. He's confident he never did, but people keep telling him. I remember that people are like, I had the VCR. And then they're like, no, I can't find it. You know, things like that. No one can find their VCR. They're like, I had the movie poster. And it's just like, people freak out. Cause they're like, no, this is, I remember this. I barely remember an inkling of that one, but yeah. See, when it comes to movies, I'm like rubbish at it because yeah. I'll watch, like I'll go to the theater and and see all the coming attractions and yeah. think, oh, okay, there's a movie that I yeah. would enjoy seeing. But then I walk out of the movie. I can't remember oh, yeah. the trailer. Yeah. I don't remember who was in what movie. That's just because the movie did its job of entertaining you and helping you but, forget. Like, I don't, yeah. even today, like, yeah. I couldn't even tell you who does what movie or yeah, where, that's true. when it was. That's true, yeah. I'm not good at, at movie trivia, so... All right, so you got 60%. You want to bring it up to a C? You want to try? I would sure like to. All right, I got one more. I, I would like an A, but and, that's not And here's happening. the thing. Okay, so I'm going to, before I get to that bonus question, I want to preface it that this Mandela effect dates, uh, it, like, people are recalling things historically, like, way back when, and they're like, no, it was like Way this. back when, when? Like Mona Lisa. Okay, oh. like the Mona Lisa picture. Is she smiling in it or not? No. Yes, she's smiling in it. She has a very, like... And that's the thing. It's such a subtle one. And most people are like you, though. They're like, no, she's not at all smiling at it. And, uh, but the fact is she is. She's kind of got a half little, kind of a smirk. It's a smirk. Yeah. But again, that's when we're like, no, I remember she wasn't smiling. She was like frowning or she was upset looking. No, she just... No, it, it was, was kind of a half smile. It's kind of a... It's kind of a neutral... Kind of like you look at me when I tell a joke. That smile. <laughs> Not this smile. Thank you for, for laughing at that one. Okay, what about this? Do you ever remember a King Henry VIII painting where he's holding a turkey leg? No. Okay, so people are like adamant that there is a painting somewhere where he's holding a turkey leg. There's a painting of him holding gloves in his hand. They're brown and, you know, could be misconstrued as a turkey. But because no. I think because of his, you know, weight gain as he got older, they were thinking, a turkey leg, that'd be Did funny. Did you know, though, that his last suit of armor that was made for him was a 54-inch waist? Yeah, that's crazy. He So the turkey leg makes sense. It does make sense. A bacon-wrapped turkey leg <laughs> dipped in hot fudge makes sense for him. So, but anyway, no, he does not uh, He does not ever have a turkey leg. I, I just think it's funny that they would actually think, yeah, he had a turkey leg. But there's people like... That are that would consider themselves art fans that would say no. He, I remember that. There's a ton out there. Kit Kat is Kit Kat hyphenated or not? 
Um, no. It isn't. Most people think it, or a lot of people think it is. No, it's, it used to be hyphenated. Uh, Fruit Loops. Spell Fruit Loops. F R O O T. Very good. Some people say no. It's F R U I T L O O P S. Spell Looney Tunes. Uh, L O O N E Y. Keep going. T O O N S. Uh uh. That's where they're like, no, it's T O N N, but no, it's actually T U N E S. It's spelled properly. But I think people are confusing, you know, like Fruit cartoon. Loops. Fruit Loops or cartoons. Yeah. So, like, Fruit Loops does it, the double O's. Looney Tunes doesn't. But cartoons makes you think it should be. Yeah, I would think it would be. But it was a knockoff of Merry Melodies. Oh. You know, so Looney Tunes, Merry Melodies, Silly Symphonies. Those were all cartoons. Then. Got it. So the actual musical tunes makes more sense. Yes, But that's people thought true. it was a cartoon. All right, you ready for your bonus one? Uh, those were not the bonus ones? No. They, they, I could go on. This, I'm, here's a, you here's the thing. Warning to you listening to this. He's fired up. Be warned. If you start looking up Mandela effects, it's going to drive you crazy. And you're going to get hooked into it and you're going to get upset. And I don't want any hate mail or Instagrams or whatever. Don't don't hate me on this. This is just something I fell across and it got me going. My One of the, my other ones besides the, the, the Shazam one was from Moonraker, the 007 movie. You remember that one? Nope. Okay, well, it had, a, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, it had a villain in it named Jaws. He was in a couple of them, but he was a really tall, big guy, had metal mouth. He oh. could, like, bite through steel cable. Oh, wow. Anyway, it, you know, he falls from space in, like, a capsule and crash lands somewhere in the countryside. And this girl helps him out of the wreckage. It's, like, the very end. Okay. And, like, basically you can tell she falls in love with him. And, like, Aww. he smiles and he's got these jaws and then she smiles at him. I remember seeing that and thinking, oh, it's funny because she has braces. And she thinks he's cute because he's got a big metal mouth. Yeah, she has braces. Oh. And in the 80s, they even did a commercial with that same character. That he wasn't wearing the metal mouth, but it was the actor. And then this girl with braces was smiling and falling in love with him. It was like a credit card commercial. Okay. And so, like, I remember thinking, she had braces. Now, no braces. Did and she? I even asked a friend of mine who's a Bond fan. He's like, yeah, I thought she had braces. And no. So now Ooh. when you go look it up, her teeth are pearly white, no braces. So that's another one I'm like, Did they I take I... the braces off or are you just remembering it wrong? I think we're remembering it wrong because of maybe the, the commercial, the, the credit card commercial that played on it a little more. But it just made more sense for her to have braces because he's got this giant metal mouth. And you're like, oh, she she actually finds him attractive because she's probably a little self-conscious because she has braces. Okay. And But... No braces. That was that's one I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I that's one of the ones that most of them I just chalk it up to pop culture over time has changed it. Right. Or our memory. Because truth be told, I'm still wanting to do a memory one. I talk about that like every 10 or 12 episodes, but our memory isn't great. And a lot of time our memory fills in gaps. And it fills in gaps with what's you know what's reasonable, what's logical, and so a lot of times, like Luke, I am your father, just logical for just to say Luke because he does say Luke, join me, Luke, and he says Luke several times, right? And contextually, it makes more sense to say Luke, so our mind just fills in, and it's Luke, not no, because no is it doesn't make sense contextually. So anyway, all right, all that to say, if you go down the the rabbit hole of, I wonder if there are some uh, Alice in Wonderland ones, probably are. If you go down that rabbit hole, though. The white rabbit will greet you and take you into the Mandela effect will, wild world of Mandela. You will just, you'll go nuts. There's just so many of them. And you're like, you I start, thought I remembered it that way. I thought I remembered it that way. If you start painting the roses red, no, I'll, I'll yeah. pull you out. This one's from the Bible. Your bonus oh, one is from the Bible. Boy, oh boy. You'll recognize it, but I guarantee you. Well, let's see. Let's just see what happens. Oh. Isaiah 11, 6. You're like, I can't quote Isaiah. I you'll can't. probably remember this quote. The blank shall dwell with the lamb. Or some will, some versions say, "Lie down with the lamb." The what? The lion. Wrong. It is the wolf will lie down with the lamb. So it says, uh, "The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the lep the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead him." So, so the lion is in that verse, but it's not. So, what do you think happened? Do you think that somehow that changed? Well, I think they started quoting it a lot in the month of March. And in like a lion, out like a lamb, okay. kind of took over. Okay. And so there was a lot of lion and lambs and in the month of March. And there, everyone's talking about the weather. And, and, <laughs> and then they're just reading Isaiah. Usually in the one year Bible, you're in Isaiah by March. Yeah, maybe. And, <laughs> no, and so not then, usually. <laughs> and then they just kept going with the weather and lions That's and not lambs. bad. Lion and lamb, that's not bad. And I think part of it has to do with that. I think like in the book of Revelation, 
the Bible describes Jesus as both the Lion of Judah and the Lamb of God. So there is a lot of, even in the Bible, Lion and Lamb talk. So I think people just like, oh, Lion, lay down with the Lamb. Because of all, uh, some other references. And I like yours, you know, the Thanks. March thing. So half half a credit point for, yes. you get 65%. So, I got a D plus. It's a solid D. That is not a D plus. That is a solid D. I, I rounded up. <laughs> Hey, but if it's 65 and if you round up on, so I really got a 70. Oh, we're I'm rounding, rounding up? Six this isn't a math class. This is a Mandela effect. This is conspiracy theory. Well, you're remembering it wrong. I got a 70. <laughs> oh, yeah. Five. I could have swore it was. 95. Let me ask you this. Has Mickey Mouse always had a tail? He had a tail in Steamboat Willie, but then it went away, I guess, in later animations. But does he have one now? No. Yeah, he does. Oh, yeah, he does. You look him up now. He didn't for a while in World War II because drawing the tail required a lot more time to animate a tail, get, making it look. And so he has a tail now. Yeah, he has a tail. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Snapdragon. I did not know that. Does he have suspenders? No. Did he ever? Did I can't remember if Steamboat Willie did or not. We had the poster forever on. Our I wall. know. That's how I knew about the tail. Ah. Make a guess. This might be worth extra credit. Yes. No, he never had suspenders. Shoot. No. Now, I think, and a lot of people are like, no, he, had, he used to have suspenders. He wore suspenders. I think, again, that's the filling in the blanks. He's got those two big buttons on his shorts, which what would buttons on your shorts side by side be? Hold up suspenders. Hold up for, for suspenders to cling on to. And so I think, again, they filled in the gaps. They're like, well, they're, they had the suspender button, so he had to have suspenders. But he never, he never did have suspenders. So... Isn't that interesting? Uh, that is it's interesting. so crazy. And, and the, the theories that come about, like, I, I mean, the living in the Matrix one's one of my favorite, though. It's like, yes, we're in the Matrix. And okay, so let me ask you this. One, one question for you. Okay. Okay. Morpheus comes. He gives you the red pill, the blue pill. I don't know which one's which anymore. I it doesn't matter. Do you want to stay plugged in or do you want to see the, the warped, <laughs> crazy reality outside the machines? What would you have chosen? I'll get the warp crazy and then I'll make a deal with the Matrix to plug me back in where I'm rich, like the bad guy did. <laughs> yeah, he had a good he had a good thing going until he got blown up. But yeah. Plug me back in, right? You know. Plug me back in, but make me rich. No, um, I don't know. I'm not too concerned. I'd want to know the truth. So I'd I'd probably say yes. Unplug me. So that's another interesting thing altogether. And I could talk about that later, but like Future episode. Yeah, it has to do with science fiction and an author named Philip K. Dick, which wrote a lot of famous science fiction. But he said he experienced something very similar to that. But I'm not going to talk about it. Anyway, um, you know, that's it's just so fun. And so if you've ever had if you have a favorite Mandela effect, you can just chat us up on social media or visit our website and tell us what one of your favorite Mandela effects is. Um, or if you are adamant, you remember some of these being a different way. I'd like to hear that because like some people are like confident they own the VHS of, of Shazam. They're like, I had it. I know. I remember that. Huh. They describe and they all describe the cover the same. He's wearing a jeweled turban. Oh, he's seriously? got no shirt on, but a little vest. And he's got which he's done outfits like that. And he did it for some like TV show. And so it could be people are just. Did he thinking. ever do a sketch like on Saturday Night Live or anything? Or? No, he only did that one, you know, huh. uh, spoof. But yeah. And it's always Sinbad. And they're like, it's Sinbad, and he was this genie, and he helped these two little kids with a problem, which I'm pretty sure that's what Kazam's was about. Uh, but yeah, they're Weird. like, they're confident he he was in one. And that's one of like the biggest one. Another one was like when Billy Graham died. Like he recently died, but then they thought some people thought they remembered he died in the early 2000s or you know, like a, you know, a while before he did. Oh. And they remember seeing his funeral on TV. And so it's interesting. Yeah, huh. you, like I said, it's it's a rabbit hole. You could just get on the internet and find and go for hours on the Mandela effect, and it might make you angry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's all the time we have. So you did okay. You got like a seventy. We'll I give you a seventy. Okay you got a C. On the, you are not plugged into the Matrix. You are you are disconnected from the Matrix enough. Okay. So that's anyway, good. that's awesome. Well, that's all the time we have. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.